In this video I want to look at the trig values when the angles are larger than 360 degrees or we'll say less than negative 360 degrees. It's pretty wild, doesn't it? But before I do that, I want, let's toss this in. What is, for example, the cosine of zero degrees? What do you think? Think about the sketch. What's cosine represent? What's the value of cosine of zero degrees? One, isn't it? Yeah, because here on the inner circle, um, there's zero degrees, and that's one. It's actually the, the point one comma zero. So the x coordinate is cosine. Cosine of zero degrees is equal to one. All right. What's the sine of zero degrees? Okay. Well, the y value is zero, isn't it? So that one's zero. There you go. How about the cosine of 90 degrees? What is it? See, this is uh, how you should be doing these videos. Try to participate in your mind, you know, work these things out. Pause the video when you need to. What's the cosine of 90 degrees? You figure it out, then I'll talk about it. Okay, hope you got zero, right? Because here is the point at 90 degrees, it's up here, and the x coordinates is zero, the y coordinate is one, so sine of 90, a uh, cosine of 90 is going to be zero, and the sine of 90 degrees is one. All right, so that, that's kind of interesting now, because let's look at this. What about the tangent of zero degrees? Well, it's sine divided by cosine, zero divided by one, is zero. And that matches the slope idea because the line connecting the origin to this point is horizontal. The slope is zero. However, when you go to tangent 90 degrees, sine over cosine would be one divided by zero and is, um, is undefined because we can't divide by zero, can we? And that matches what you probably learned in outro about vertical lines. Vertical lines have undefined slope. So you can't put a number on it. All right, so uh, if you punch in tangent 90 degrees on a calculator, you're going to get an error message. It doesn't like it. All right, and it shouldn't because it's you can't divide by zero. All right, so that's important to know that. Now, let's, uh, let's expand the idea. Let's take a couple laps around the circle and see what happens here. So let's uh, work out, for example, the sine of uh, what? Uh, how about... Uh, sine of 780 degrees. All right, where is the world? We're in the world of 780 degrees. Um, all right, well, okay. So, where zero degrees is here, but it's also where 360 degrees is. If I take another lap around the circle, it's where 720 degrees is. And that's 60 degrees more. So I think it's uh, in the same position as 60 degrees. But we can think of it this way. If we subtract 360 degrees, it puts me in the same position on the circle. So the, you know, I'm not trying to say that 780 is equal to, uh, what would that be, 520 degrees. No, they're not the same. 420 degrees, sorry. 780 is not the same as 420. However, being in the same position on a circle, the sine values are equal to each other. And, um, and that's still too large, right? That's, that's more than one circle. So let's, uh, let's subtract another 360. And now I'm down to 60 degrees. Ah, good. 60 degrees. There it is. The sine is the y value going to be the square root of 3 over 2. There you go. So, um, kind of interesting, kind of interesting, uh, the, um, where we can just keep going around in a circle if we want to. Um, example of that is uh, an application. And I, I can't remember if I talked about this in a video. I might have done it in one of my calculus videos, but 
Anyway, there's a very nice problem I like to do in calculus too, where where I, I bring out an old record album and I ask the class, let's figure out how long the groove is in that record album. And um, and I, I have them at, make them tell me what do you need to know. And eventually they they want to know some measurements of the album. They want to know how fast it's spinning, how long it will run. And, uh, and the one I pull out is uh, Symphony Number no. Seven by Antonin Dvorak. First and second movements, so it's a you know, record album this big. It's 12 inches across, and we measured some of these distances. And um, it turns out because it spins uh, 100 times every three minutes, it, it turns out it, it, it runs for 22 and a half minutes, and uh, it ends up uh, rotating. Um, 750 times. Okay, so when it rotates 750 times, you can imagine 750 times uh, 360 degrees. Big number. Big number. Every time it rotates, it just keeps racking up the sines and cosines. And so um, even in radians, it's um, 750 rotations, 2 pi rotations per circle, that's 1500 pi. So uh, you get very large angle measurements and, and by the way, that's a problem that's impossible to do in X and Y coordinates. We have to uh, use a different coordinate system which takes advantage of our circular trigonometry. It's called um, polar coordinates. So you're going to learn about polar coordinates in this course. Uh, it's, it's down the road a bit. And uh, polar coordinates, uh, very interesting way of looking things at things. So anyway, this is um, one place where I definitely had to go way over 360 degrees in order to work a problem. And um, so there's, you know, there's a need for this. There's definitely a need for this. Okay, uh, let's, let's knock out a few more examples here. What about the, um, the secant? I'm just kind of making up stuff. Secant of, um, oh, I don't know. How about, uh, hmm, 22 pi over 6? <laughs> 22 pi over 6. 22 pi over 6. I, my 2 is uh, a little messed up there. Let me fix my 2. Uh, reminds me of a, of a dime minute in 1942. It was a mercury dime made in 1942, which uh, was stamped over in 1941. And uh, there are not too many of those out there, but they're, they're worth a lot of money if you find them. I found that out one time. I thought that was pretty interesting that sometimes they. Uh, once in a great while, the U.S. Mint will stamp things over, but it has nothing to do with trigonometry, does it? Now, I said 22 pi over 6. Do you mind if I change that to... Ah, uh, we'll keep 22 pi over 6. Uh, why not? Let's do that. All right, so, uh, because I'm looking at that, well, look, we can reduce the fraction. Let's do that. It's the same as the secant of 11, 11 pi over 3. I hate it when the brain says 11 and the, and the hand writes pi. 11 pi over 3. All right, so reduce to 22 6, 11 thirds. And um, where in the world is that? Um, oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, but you see, 2 pi radians would be 6 pi over 3. So if I subtract 6 pi over 3 here, I'm subtracting one spin around the circle, and that puts me at uh, 5 pi over 3. Okay, great. I know, you're thinking, well, why don't you just do it in degrees? Of course we can do it in degrees. <laughs> okay, I just want to stretch you a little bit. Let's, let's do one in radians. Uh, but yeah, punch it in degrees, it would be quicker you know, to be practical. Now, now what's 5 pi over 3? Well, pi over 3 is a one-third of a one-third of a half circle. So here is pi over 3, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3 looks like 300 degrees. Okay. <laughs> Same as 300 degrees. And we want the secant. Oh boy. Okay, well, uh, secant has something to do with the x value, doesn't it? And the x value for at 5 pi over 3 is 1 half 
So the secant should be the reciprocal of that one half should be equal to positive two. There you go, positive two. So um, now, now that's when you pull up the calculator and say, "Well, let's just double check that." Okay. So twenty-two pi, twenty-two times uh, one hundred eighty degrees divided by six, six hundred sixty degrees. And if I do 1 divided by the cosine of 660, I get 2. All right, so isn't that nice? Uh, it'd be amazing how many students don't, don't take advantage of technology like that. So um, now, if you're my student, I'm going to ask you to show your work on problems like this. Show your work. If you want to check your answer on a calculator, be my guest. But uh, I want to know that you're learning your way around the circle and uh, like this. All right, well, let's uh, do one or two more of these. Well, here's the cotangent of negative 19 pi over 6. What in the world is that? Okay, well, um, a couple of ways to approach this. 2 pi is, using 6 as a common denominator, is 12 pi over 6. So, if I took minus 19 pi over 6 and added, this time I want to add because I want to get this up to the positive range. So if I added 12 pi over 6, we would get uh, negative 7 pi over 6. There we go, negative 7 pi over 6. And then if I took minus 7 pi over 6, still negative, let's add another 2 pi, add 12 pi over 6, I'm at positive 5 pi over 6. There we go. And um, Or we could say, well, let's just uh, Let's go with degrees. All right, so 19 times 180 divided by 6. It's going to be, I uh, did something, oh, divided by 6. There we go. Minus 570 degrees. So minus 570 degrees. Uh, you know, twice around the circle is adding 720. So if I add 720 degrees, I'll be at um, 150 degrees, which is also equal to 5 pi over 6. So However you look at, we're at 150 degrees and uh, on the circle, so this would be the same as the cotangent of 5 pi over 6, okay. Um, or 150 degrees, it's right out there, isn't it? Now, now cotangent is uh, uh, that angle is well, <laughs> it's not the slope, because tangent is a slope, isn't it? And uh, so I could, I could, you know, several approaches we could make here. We could just do cosine divided by sine. That's what a cotangent is, cosine divided by sine. We could, we could do that. Or we could say, well, this is um, 1 over the tangent of my angle, whether you're using 150 or 5 pi over 6. 1 divided by the tangent. Well, what's the tangent? So the tangent is the slope of this line, and it's shallow. I think we might have had one earlier. It's a little shallow, so it's minus, but it's also a negative slope, isn't it? It's falling negative square root of 3 over 3. And if you invert that, you get 3, negative 3 over square root of 3, which is minus the square root of 3. In other words, the cotangent should be negative square root of 3. Got all that? <laughs> okay, so I, I think it's it's really worthwhile. I, I can't stress this enough. Really worthwhile to try to think your way through these problems. You know, you'll get better and better at uh, at applying trig and using trig. And um, as a practical everyday thing, no, no, no. In real life, you use a calculator, right? If you're an engineer, you probably won't get those kind of angles. You'll get like uh, I don't know, whatever it is. <laughs> 87 degrees, well, we don't have an exact value for that, so you have to punch it on a calculator. But as far as learning the subject, getting good at, at the using trigonometry, I can't stress this enough. Um, okay, so let, let me su suggest something very uh, practical for you. And uh, now I, I have this memorized in my head. I've had it memorized there since, uh, I don't know, probably 46 years, something like that. Because um, when I took when I first saw trigonometry, I was in 11th grade, and we had the advantage of having the entire year to learn trigonometry and 
some other algebra topics. And um, so this was kind of drilled into us. Well, in a college course, you don't have that luxury. You don't have all that amount of time. Um, but I had this kind of dartboard in my head. <laughs> okay. uh, here's, here are the friendly angles. So we have uh, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, and, and it goes on. This, here's uh, 120 degrees. Uh, 135, 150, 180, and you can continue around the circle all the way up to to there. So uh, 330 degrees will be your last one. Then, then what is this in radians? All right, well, this is pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2, uh, 2 pi over 3, and you can continue around the circle, 3 pi over 4. And uh, 5 pi over 6. That's pi. Fill out the bottom half. And then you can have a chart. Build your own chart. You can have the um, angles and the cos and all the trig values. So, you, for example, for example, you could have uh, angles in. Uh, how would that work? How would you do a trig chart? Oh, I don't know. Well, you could have uh, like a, you know, a zero degrees and zero. So here's, uh, I don't know, I've never done one of these charts. I just have it in my head. Um, here's radians, degrees, and then uh, cosine theta, sine theta, tangent theta, and, and go all the way down, do the other six trig functions. And then you've got uh, 30, um, 30 degrees which is pi over 6, pi over 6, and then you've got 45 degrees, which is pi over 4, and you can start filling these out. You know, this is 1, square root of 3 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, 0, 1 half, square root of 2 over 2, 0, um, square root of 3 over 3, 1. Fill out the entire chart, the entire circle. And um, just figuring those out is, is good exercise, and it's nice to have as a, as a handy reference. So um, we had this drilled into you. So you could ask me uh, the, any angle here and any trig function of any angle on here at either degrees or radians, and I can tell you, because I have this drilled into my head. Um, you probably don't have time to learn it that thoroughly. You know, being a college course, we just don't have that luxury. So, uh, but, but as much as you can learn is better. As much as you can learn is better. And as you saw, drawing pictures is helpful. Because you see sizes of x and y coordinates, which translates to cosines and sines. You can look at slopes, that translates to tangents, and invert that as cotangent. And so, um, you know, the little tricks of drawing the circles like I've been doing, very handy. Looking at coordinate values. Um, but also, I think, uh, just the act of filling out this chart, Having as a nice reference is uh, is pretty nice. So, and I know here we are stressing only a few angles. I mean, <laughs> there are infinitely many angles, aren't there? All right. For the rest of those, we just use calculators. All right. So, uh, but but like I said, this is uh, this is a good good thing to to know about.